Well, let's dive into God's word. If you're new with us today, you picked a great time to come to People's Church. Almost any time is a great time, but this is super special because I'm talking about the vision of People's Church, the heartbeat, the DNA of who we are as a church. We, we've been looking at we are People's Church. Church, and today what I want to talk to you about is that we are a place that celebrates diversity. And I want us to look at Acts chapter 15 and, and verse number one and two as we look at we are a place of diversity. It says, Certain people came down from Judea to Antioch and were teaching the believers, Unless you are circumcised according to the custom taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. This brought Paul and Barnabas into sharp dispute and debate with them. So Paul and Barnabas were appointed along with some other believers to go up to Jerusalem to see the apostles and elders about this question. Now notice a group of Jewish Christians were saying the Gentiles could not be saved unless they followed their customs, their tradition of being circumcised. And this caused sharp dispute. It caused debate in the church. And the truth of the matter is Jews and Gentiles were very different from one another. They spoke different languages. Jews worshipped Yahweh only. Gentiles in general were polytheistic. They, they believed in many gods. Jews were required to keep kosher with their food. On the other hand, Gentiles were able to eat non-kosher food like pork and shellfish. So, so, so Gentiles ate things like smothered pork chops and chitlins with Louisiana hot sauce and some liver and onions and some with some collard greens and yams and some pinto beans with some ham hock. I'm about to preach today, church. <laughs> but 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 Jews, they, they were they were circumcised and uh, the majority of Gentiles were, were not circumcised. And so the Jewish Christians were telling the Gentile Christians they could not really be saved until they got circumcised. I started thinking about my own salvation experience. I gave my heart to Jesus at a Fellowship of Christian Athletes meeting in a football locker room in Wewoka, Oklahoma. And it was a very emotional experience for me. I was crying. I was weeping. As I said yes to Jesus, I prayed the sinner's prayer. And I can only imagine after I prayed the sinner's prayer, my sins are forgiven, if one of the leaders would have said, hey, 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 Herbert, you're not quite yet saved. You got to come back to the coach's office real quick. What you mean, man? Yeah, yeah, you're not, you're not saved yet. Come back to the coach's office so you can really get saved. What, what I got, what, what, what I, why do I got to go back there? We got to do a little search, man. A little circumcision, then you'll be saved. I probably wouldn't have got saved that night, church. I would have been, I'd, I'd have said, no, I think I'm going to pass on Jesus tonight. The, the, the Jews were making it hard for the Gentiles to have a relationship with God and to be a part of the church. That they, they, they were not about diversity. They were about division. And this same type of division still happens in the church today. People are trying to keep other people out of church or away from Jesus because of their own customs, their own traditions. You, you can't be a part of our church unless you are the same skin color as us. And the most segregated hour every week is still Sunday morning during church. But I'm so grateful to God that People's Church is be being a part of bringing healing to hearts by bringing different skin colors together to lift up the name of Jesus. Come on. Can you give God praise for that? That we're bringing people together. You know, today we have churches trying to cause division and say things like you can't be a part of our church unless you're rich like us or middle class like us or poor like us or vote like us or vaccinated like us or unvaccinated like us or wear mask like us or don't wear mask like us. We, we've got churches causing division saying things like, well, you can't be a part of us unless you wear a suit and tie like us or wear skinny jeans like us or like gospel music like us or sing 
hymn, songs out the hymn books like us. You better not post on social media about the latest current event. You better post on social media about the latest current event. Well, if you want to attend our church, we're a CNN watching church. We're, we're, we're a Fox News watching church. Well, well, you better preach about the most recent headlines in your sermon. Well, you better not preach about the most recent headlines in your sermon. And churches and Christians have been finding every little reason possible to be divided. And this is not the heart of God. One of the reasons we started People's Church 20 years ago was to be a house that celebrates diversity. Diversity has not happened by accident. We've been very intentional to create a culture that celebrates diversity. At People's Church, we don't tolerate diversity. We celebrate diversity. We believe it is the heart of God. Let me give you four reasons we celebrate diversity. For all my note takers, take some good notes today. Four reasons we celebrate diversity out of Acts chapter 15 and some other verses I want to share with you today as well. Number one is we celebrate diversity because God celebrates diversity in his church. I want you to see back in this story, Acts chapter 15, verse 7. After much discussion, Peter got up and addressed them. Brothers, you know that some time ago, God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear from my lips the message of the gospel and believe. And so what Peter does is he, he reminds the church that God is the one who chose to allow the Gentiles to receive salvation through Christ. He reminds them God chose the Gentiles. God chose diversity. Diversity is God's idea. It's the heart of God. It says this in Acts chapter 11, verse 17 and 18. So if God gave them, talking about the Gentiles, the same gift, referring to the Holy Spirit, he gave us who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Who was I to think that I could stand in God's way? When they heard this, they had no further objections and praised God, saying, So then, even to Gentiles, God has granted repentance to, that leads to life. Church, God is the one who chose to include Gentiles in his salvation plan. God chose to, to choose both, both Jews and Gentiles to be a part of his family. And because this was God's choice, anyone who tries to keep people from following Jesus or attending church because of a tradition or their skin color or age or gender or politics or, or economic status, they're fighting against God. God chose diversity. It's the heart of God. And since God chose diversity, people's church chooses diversity. I want you to see a second reason we celebrate diversity, and that is we celebrate diversity because God's heart is for us to be one. Notice in Acts chapter 15, verse 8 and 9, it says, God who knows the heart showed that he accepted them, the Jews, by the, the Gentiles, by giving the Holy Spirit to them just as he did to us. He did not discriminate between us and them, for he purified their hearts by faith. God did not discriminate because he wants every man and every woman to be his son or daughter. He wants all of us to be a part of the family of God. Understand this, God wants his family to be made up of different groups of people that have all trusted in Jesus Christ and he wants us all to be united. He wants us all to be one in heart and one in mind. It pleases the heart of God. I, I think about my children. I have, Tiffany and I have four children. And one of the things that makes me smile as a father is that my four children, they not only love each other, they like each other. I mean, they've had their moments growing up, but they're friends. They like each other. They're unified, and it brings a smile to my heart. And one of the key things that makes our Heavenly Father smile is when different groups of people come together under the name of Jesus, and they don't just love each other, but they like 
each other. They become unified. They become one. Here's how the scripture says it. You can give God praise for that. It's, it is, it's the heart of God. It's the heart of God. I want you to notice the prayer that Jesus prayed. This is what our Savior prayed in John 17, verse 21. He said that all of them may be one. Everybody shout all. We need to that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are, you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me so that they may be brought to complete unity then. When they're brought to complete unity, when they're one, then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me even as you have loved me. And one of the greatest desires of our Heavenly Father is that his church would be one. Jesus said, when the church is one, when the church is unified, did you catch that? He says, then the world will know that you sent me. You see, a huge way the love of God is revealed to the world is when God's people are one. When God's people are unified. And one of the reasons the world is not attracted to Jesus, the world is not attracted to attending church, is because the church can't get along. Always arguing. Fighting. I will cut you. I mean, the church can be mean. And the world's not attracted. Listen, church, one of the prayers that you and I need to constantly pray for the church of Jesus Christ is we got to pray, Lord, make your church one. That was your prayer, so that's our prayer. Make your church one. Bring us to complete unity because a divided world needs a united church. Here's what the scripture says in Romans chapter 12, verse number 5. So in Christ, we, though many, we're many, we're different, form one body. And each member belongs to all the others. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. God make us one so that the world will know that you sent your son Jesus. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. Lord, make us one. Make us us unified not uniformity but unified we're different and that's okay being different is a beautiful thing we're stronger because we are different and all of our differences actually make us better if we'll bring our differences together we're actually better together. We're stronger together. So at People's Church, we celebrate our differences. Here's, here's the first one. We celebrate the different races and cultures. We celebrate it. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 through 28 says this. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you were baptized into Christ and have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And Paul is saying, don't you make your race or your culture your most important identity. Don't make your age, your social status, your political status, your economic status your most important identity. Your most important identity is that you're a child of God. That you're a son or daughter of God. That's your most important identity. Hey, I, listen, let me say this to you. I thank God that I, God created me to be a black man. I'm proud of my culture, proud of my heritage. My wife, Tiffany, she's a white lady. She's, she's grateful that she's a white woman and loves her heritage, loves her culture. We, we love our culture. You know, I can't get my wife to eat chitlins, but I love to eat them. That's my culture. That's my I can't get it, to, you know, I've tr I tried. She get him about up this close. Mm, she, she can't, I think this smells good. I, I like this smell. I, I grew up eating rabbit and squirrel and hog head cheese and pig feet. Tiffany won't eat any of it. 
That's my culture. Proud of it. But we're both proud of our culture. We're proud of our heritage. But can I tell you the thing that we're most proud of is that we're children of God. Our greatest identity is in Jesus Christ, that we're blood-bought, we're saved, we're born again. And I'm a, I'm a son of God. She's a daughter of God. That's our most important identity. Church, it's okay. It's okay for you to be proud of your African heritage or your Irish or your Asian or Hispanic or maybe your Middle Eastern or Hawaiian or German or whatever race or culture you're from. It's okay for you to be proud of that. But your most important identity is a child of God. Your race and your culture should not divide the church. The Bible says in Genesis that we're all made in the image of God. That means no matter your skin color, no matter where you're born, you're made in God's image. There is no superior race. The entire human race is made in the image of God Almighty. And as Christ followers, we're all a part of the family of God. Wow, I love the word of God. Let me give you a num number two, number two. So we celebrate different races and cultures. We also celebrate the different gifts that God's given us. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 and 5 says, There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. And at People's Church, we celebrate all the different gifts that God has given us. Some of you right now, you, 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 you think you're insignificant. You think, well, I'm just not that talented. I'm not that gifted. And I just want to say, the devil is a liar. God created you. He gave you those gifts. He gave you those talents. He gave you that personality. And he wants to use your personality and your gifts and your talents for his glory. He wants to use you to see more changed lives. Little old insignificant me, yes, little old you, God wants to use you to make a difference. He created you. He wired you. He's given you passions and gifts to make a difference for his glory kingdom and we thank God for all of your gifts some of you have gifts to work with children we thank God for all of you working with our children some of you have, have l loved youth and you serve every Wednesday and, and serve in our youth and make a difference some of you love the young adults and you're serving at recharge on Thursday some of you have administrative gifts and you're serving behind the scenes in, in administrative areas and checking in people and you're just so friendly and wonderful at administration and good at it some of you have technical skills and, and production skills and you're running cameras right now now, and you're behind the scenes in the production, running switcher. And, I mean, so many different gifts we have in our church. Some of you have a, a, just a gift of hospitality. You make people feel warm and you're friendly and you smile and you're great in our first impressions ministry. And we thank God for you. Some of you play an instrument or, or you have singing talents and you sing on the worship team at all the campuses. And we just thank God for you. Matter of fact, let's do this. I want us to celebrate big time all the people using their gifts to serve on our dream team. Come on, at every location. Would you thank God for everybody who's serving? Come on. Come on. Thank God for your gift. We celebrate your gift. We celebrate your passion. We celebrate your wiring. We celebrate how God's using you to make a difference. And we don't do this often, but I want to do this today. Every single Sunday we have worship teams every single Wednesday, worship teams doing deeper nights, worship teams, 21 days of prayer and fasting, worship teams get here at 6 a.m. in the morning. I thank God. Do you thank God for our worship teams, our band? Come on. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, all of you that played the instruments. Thank you for singing. Thank you for using your gifts. And it's been a little while, but I want to say this. I want you, some of you are sitting out there today, and you can sing. Now, some of you can sing. Like, you got it. You can play an instrument. We don't even know it. Would you let God use your gift to make a difference in his kingdom? I'm calling all of our musicians. I'm calling all of our singers to come out and come forth and let God use you on a Sunday morning. Try out for Sunday mornings or on a Wednesday night or for Thursday night for Epic, Thursday night for Recharge. Let God use you. Here's what I want all of my singers to do, all of my, all of my people who, are, who play an instrument. Would you get to growth track on June the 5th? I want you to go to growth track, and I want you to go through growth track, and I want you to get plugged into our worship department and let God use your gifts to make 
a difference. I thank God for all the different gifts that we have in our church. We celebrate them. Let me tell you what else we celebrate. We celebrate the different generations. Different generations. We celebrate our senior citizens. Come on, if you're a senior citizen at one of our locations, would you clap right now? Come on, where am I saying? I thank God for our senior citizens, your experience, your wisdom, your gray hair. Some of you got gray hair, but you dye it. You come on, you color that. I know, I know it's gray. I know you're gray. Silver, somebody said. I thank God for the senior citizen. Come on, I celebrate all of our middle-aged people. A am I considered middle-aged, church? Mm, no, no. Somebody said no. I, I received a no. I thank God for the wisdom and the experience of our middle age. I, we celebrate all of our adults. We celebrate our young adults. We celebrate your gifts and your creativity and your wisdom. We celebrate our youth and our kids. I thank God for our youth and kids, their passion, their zeal, their creativity, their tech savviness. I thank God for our kids and our youth. And our kids and youth are not just the church of tomorrow. They're the church of today. And people's church, you and I, our senior citizens, our middle-aged, our adults, our young adults, we are passionate about raising up world changers that will leave a legacy for Jesus. Our kids and students, can I tell you, our kids and students the next 20 years will, will be leading the way in seeing more change lives. God's brought us thus far, but they are up next to lead us into the next 20 years. And this is why we are passionate about every single Sunday teaching and training your children every Sunday in our kids' environments about Jesus. That's why every Wednesday night, 6th to 12th grade students, every Wednesday we have youth service at our locations to train your kids up in the word of God, to challenge them to have godly friendships, to live to live out their God-given purpose. We have recharge every Thursday night here at the Oklahoma City campus for our young adults to strengthen godly relationships and so they can grow in their faith and today I want to take it another level I have an exciting announcement about the next generation does anybody want to hear this announcement 40 of you does anybody want to hear this exciting announcement today Midwest City Northwest Indianapolis online oh we're passionate about this generation today let me give you an exciting announcement something new something powerful something that is going to make a generational impact that we're launching this fall at People's Church. People's Church is starting a leadership college this fall. 20 years, but we're just getting started. People's Church Leadership College. For short, we'll call it PCLC. PCLC for short. Let me give you a little information about this. People's Church Leadership College will serve as an extension site of Southeastern University out of Lakeland, Florida, to provide a great next step for our students. Now understand, this is not just for those who feel called to full-time ministry. This is for any student who desires an affordable, accredited and Christ-centered education experience. And what I love about it, it's going to be hands-on learning opportunity for our students to discover and develop their divine design. Northwest Campus, get ready for this. Pastor Tommy McCall over at our Northwest Campus will serve as our site director to provide just oversight and on-site practicum opportunities. And right now, as we just launch it this fall, we're not in a place that we can just have it for everybody this fall. That's our goal. But this fall is going to be for everyone 22 and under. So if you're 22 and under, we want to have you to be a part of this launch of our People's Church Leadership College where you can have a Christ-centered environment, get an accredited degree, grow closer to Jesus, be able to serve in the church in a greater way. How many believe God's going to raise up some warriors through our People's Church Leadership? I'm so excited. Our college that's launching this fall and all of you parents who are interested, all of you students who are interested in being a part of this, you want more information about this, you want to take your next step, grab your phones out right now. You can text PCLC to 94000, PCLC. You can do that now or even take a picture of this. Take a picture of it. 
but do it. Get this in this week, PCLC to 94000, and fill out the form there, and we'll reach out to you with next steps about our People's Church Leadership College. It's 20 years, but we're just getting started. Can we thank God one more time that he continues to move our church forward to see more changed lives? Let me give you the third reason we celebrate diversity, and that is we celebrate diversity because it shows we have the love of God in our hearts. There's way too much hate. And I'm not talking about the world. I expect the world to hate our biblical values and convictions. Jesus said that the world would hate us. John chapter 15, verse 18 and 19 says, if the world hates you, Keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. So church, the scripture says the world's going to hate us. What's disappointing is to see how many people who call themselves Christians are so mean are so ugly and so hateful. Christians are using social media as a weapon to create hate and division. Christians are quoting scripture out of context to create hate and division amongst different races and different people groups. And I want you to hear what the Bible says. As I read the Bible, please understand I don't have a trick Bible. This is in your Bible too. 1 John chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light, and there is nothing in them to make them stumble. 1 John chapter 4, verse 20, whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. John chapter 13 verse 35, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another and will know that you're not his disciple because you hate one another. If you're not a follower of Jesus, I'm so glad that you're here. Please keep coming. You're so welcome here. I love it that you come. But just for right now, I want to just speak to people who say, I'm a Christian. For all of you who are truly Christians, you have to stop hating and causing division with people who look different, vote different, and believe different than you. You you, you have to stop using your personal experience, your upbringing, your personal viewpoints and perspective as a weapon or an excuse to hate others. Hate always separates. Hate always divides. It keeps us from coming together. It keeps us divided. It keeps us from listening to one another. Hate keeps us from having empathy for people who are different than us. But biblical love will sit down and listen to someone else's viewpoint, someone else's perspective, someone else's experience. Let me tell you what love will do. Love will build a relationship with somebody who's different than you. Love will listen to somebody who's different than you. That's why small groups are so important. As we launch small groups in June, June 5th, would you get in a small group with somebody who's different than you and listen to their perspective, listen to their experience, value what they have to say? Listen, you may listen and still agree to disagree. That's okay. You can do that in love. And sometimes you may even feel that you need to boldly just share your values, share your biblical convictions. You just feel this boldness to share, and that's okay, but bold doesn't equal hate. You can be bold and still not hate. God's called us to love one another. Let me give you a fourth reason that we celebrate diversity, and that is this. We celebrate diversity because it builds bridges and tear down, it tears down walls. God has called us as people's church to bridge, be bridge builders, not wall builders. See, bridge builders are trying to get people in. Wall builders are trying to keep people out. The church should be putting up searchlights 
looking for hurting, broken, lost humanity. We should be putting up search lights, not security lights, trying to keep people out. You know, you don't, you don't belong. And God has called us at People's Church to make it as easy as possible for people to have a relationship with Jesus and to worship at our church. We don't want to make it hard for people to come to Christ. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is right here in Acts chapter 15, verse number 19. Here's what it says. Whew. It is my judgment, therefore, that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. We should not make it difficult. We live in a society where people are hurting People are looking for answers, looking for peace, looking for hope, looking for freedom, looking for God. And they look at Christians. They look at the church. And the church can make it so difficult for people who are trying to turn to God. They're trying. They're, they're like, I, I want to serve God. I, I, Jesus is up here. God's up here. I want to I wanna get to God. I, I want to serve God. But, but in churches, we start making it diff difficult like, like they did in Acts 15. Well, if you're not circumcised, you can't live for the Lord. That's our tradition since you're not circumcised. And then we start removing the rungs off the ladder. Well, if you don't have the same skin color as us, you can't. You can't. You're really not really welcome at our church. We're going to look at you funny. Well, if you don't vote like us, don't wear a mask like us, if you, if, 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 if you have a mask on, you don't wear one, we're going to have a problem with you. Just, you got to be like us. And if you don't, I don't really know if you're going to serve the Lord. And, mm, where you say you come from? Mm. And people are hurting and they're broken and they're lost and they look at Christians and they look at the church and they're like, man, I want to get to God. But I don't know how you made it difficult. You removed all the wrongs. You told me I got to look like you and vote like you and dress like you and sing like you. And if I don't act like you, then I can't get to God. And he says, don't make it difficult for the Gentiles who are trying to turn to God because God is for everybody when Jesus said for God so loved the world he wasn't just talking about black people or brown people or white people or Democrat people or Republican people or independent people or rich people or middle class people or poor people God so loved the world he was talking about everybody everybody and I'm committed to pastor a church that's for everybody. Pastor, why are you so passionate about making church for everybody? Let me tell you why. Because everybody needs forgiveness. Everybody is going to spend eternity somewhere. Everybody needs new life through Christ. Everybody needs a spiritual family when they're going through difficult times. Everybody needs Christian friends. Everybody needs biblical solutions to life's problems. People's church is for everybody because God is for everybody. The gospel is for everybody. Salvation is for everybody. People's church is a place that celebrates diversity. And we're going to do everything that we can to reach everybody with the good news of Jesus Christ and we're going to do our best not to take not not to take the wrongs off the ladder we want to put the wrongs on the ladder so that people can have a relationship with Jesus